The Bothy Storytelling Podcast is a member of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATB. Welcome to the Bothy Storytelling Podcast. I'm your host, Callum Lycan. And today's podcast, well, it's a kind of loose-themed one because it's all about change. It's all about my evolution. It's all about looking at ways that I'm going to have to adapt because I've realised that as a storyteller in Canada, there's serious challenges. So it's about kind of how I'm evolving and what I'm looking at and public speaking and going to events and seeing what's out there because this is definitely something I can do. But before we get into all that, let's have a word from one of our sponsors and this sponsor is perfect for this episode. ATP knows that being an entrepreneur and business owner has its challenges. That's why they've created their entrepreneur centres. So whether you're dreaming, building or growing, you can access a powerful set of tools to help your business and personal finances grow. With locations in Edmonton, Calgary and Lethbridge and monthly pop-ups across the province, it's just one more way ATB is helping to reinvent banking. Visit ATB entrepreneurcenter.com to find the location closest to you. That's atbentrepreneurcenter.com. And what they offer at these centres is networking, mentoring, workshops and banking all in one location. I regularly visit the Calgary one for a lot of their workshops and ongoing events and it kind of ties in with this podcast uh, kind of in my mindset what I want to do and how I want to progress from seeing a lot of these workshops and events and more out and about in Calgary. Now, as I said, this podcast doesn't really have a kind of theme behind it. It's more just about kind of my progression because one of the things that I've realised since coming to Calgary in Canada is my mindset has to change. You know, for years I've lived in this arty-farty kind of mentality. Oh, I'm an artist. Oh, this is wonderful. Oh, and it has allowed me a kind of, in my own head and maybe in my attitude towards things, to be this very relaxed and, oh, well, you know, it's all about the art, lovies. It's all about this. And you know what? Bugger that. That's, that's not the reality, folks, because it's cost me dearly. I love what I do. I love being a storyteller. I love being a performer. And yes, it is about the art and it's about the love of the story and getting stories across. But the reality is I've had to refocus my mindset and actually look at who I am. Yes, I'm a storyteller. Yes, I'm an artist. Yes, this is a craft. But you know what? It's a business. I am a businessman. I am an entrepreneur. And I'm having to readdress the way I deal with things because I can't just sit back and go, oh, you know, it's all about the art and the craft. And I love telling stories at events and I'll get paid and blah, 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 because that's nonsense. That doesn't work. I can't survive that way. So I've had to sit down and seriously look at who I am and what I do. And it's made me realize that, you know what? I used to be a businessman. I used to be heavy into business in retail and banking and all those things. And I know it all. I know all that background. I've got that corporate thing. But here I am being a performer, which I love. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to diss this life. But it's about refocusing your mindset. I am always going to be a storyteller and a performer, but I need to keep it in mind that even though I am that, I am technically a business and an entrepreneur. I need to keep the mindset that my life, my money, my family, my support is by doing what I do. But because the vastness of Canada, because of the way it's set up, I've also realised that I can't just become a travelling storyteller as I'd always envisioned. I can't become this performer full time. I need to look at storytelling in the broader spectrum, not just in the libraries or the schools or the festivals where I go and tell stories. I need to look at storytelling as a greater picture. And that picture is the art and craft of storytelling, public speaking, mentorship, business development, uh, CEO development, professional development, all those areas that encompass what I call storytelling. Because when we look at the story, 
we can't just say storytelling is all about fables and tales. The reality is storytelling is everything. It is all the world. Every aspect of your life, you're telling a story. You meet someone in the street, you tell them a story. You meet someone in a business, you tell them a story. You're watching TV, well, in your head, you're telling stories. Life is all about stories. And I've been forgetting this. I've got myself embroiled in this concept that it is just about the fables, the myths, the legends, the history, which are great because I love them. Oh, well, you guys know that. Anyone that's listened to this podcast knows that I love what I do, but I also have to up my game now. I need to focus on other avenues. So lately, I've been going to places like the Entrepreneur Centre. Um, I've been going to public speaking and talking clubs. I've been meeting people, networking. Oh, Okay, folks, so if you met me at a show, you'd be like, oh, wow, this guy's really outgoing and he's really, you know, easy going and gets on with everyone. Put me in a networking situation and I become an introvert. I become really socially awkward. I am socially awkward. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how to network well because it's not something I've ever been taught. None of my businesses have involved it. But it's a wee kind of, I don't know if it's a Scottish thing or a life thing, but I'm always a bit wary about intruding in people's lives. So I'm the guy that stands there and hopefully people will come and talk to. But then, of course, when they do... The fun really begins because one of the things I've noticed about networking, here's a bit of advice for anyone thinking about really getting into it. Research who's going, if you can, if it's possible. Find out about the people that are going, even their business, and maybe focus on one or two of those people if you think there can be a connection there. Don't go, as I've done in the past, without knowing who's going and hoping to write, speak to the right people because it doesn't necessarily work. And also if you do something unusual. So let's just say you're a storyteller or a burlesque artist or something, one of the more unique things. Now, you know you have a broad spectrum of things you can offer. Why did I say burlesque artist? That just jumped into my head. That was a random one. Um, that's a shout out to all my burlesque friends out there. Um, but basically, it's like I have had it and I love it. Okay, so here it goes. Someone walks up to you, hi, I'm such and such, I do this. Oh, hi there, I'm Callum, I'm a storyteller. And you see their mind twitch. You see a blankness. Then you see a little kind of twitch above their eyes, a nervousness as they try to compute the pain in their head, as they try and figure out what the hell is a storyteller. And then it happens, the most exciting bit, their eyes start darting around the room. They're looking for their escape strategy, someone that hopefully catches their eye that they don't know, but they'll pretend they do so they can run away because they have no idea what a storyteller is, which amazes me because it's such a key word. It's been bracketed about anywhere, branded about, and it's crazy. Story is a huge buzzword at the moment, but no one understands it when you actually say you're a storyteller. But then it's when I've also created this new entity, you see, because my evolution, I've realized, okay, I have two sides to my business now, the studio work, podcasting, radio, CD creation, etc, cetera, etc, cetera. and then the outside work, which is storytelling. But then I also thought I need to get back into the business and the training side, so I branded myself a narrative consultant. Now, this is a very UK style of term, consultant, etc. I discovered the other night that consultant's a bad word over here. I should have called myself a strategist, but no one knows what narrative is. So basically, they're all like, oh, you should call yourself a brand strategist or something, but I'm like, no, because that's not what I am. I might call myself a narrative strategist because I'm creating people's narrative and helping them create their story. But it's the weirdest thing ever that story is such a popular word, but yet it's got a complete oblivious of understanding with a lot of people. They don't get it. Yet everybody is telling a story in those pitches. Um, you know, like as I say, I've been at these uh, ATB. I've, I've been to a lot. Now, one of the things I do as I love helping people develop their presentation skills and their public speaking skills because that's something that's dear to me. I do a lot of public speaking. I do a lot of talking. The storytelling is public speaking to a degree. So I love doing what I do. What I've discovered is there's a lot of people out there who do it and aren't very good. But the other side of it is this non negative or shall I say no constructive criticism you are not allowed should or would have when you go to these events it must be positive 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 now tell me folks 
if you go to an event to learn, would you not prefer constructive criticism or, as I call it, the shit sandwich is one kind of term. You know, positive, negative, positive. That way you've got something to work on. But over here, a lot of people, it's like I've gone to two or three and there's been, no, no, we're not allowed negative. Nothing negative. No, I'm not talking about negative. I'm talking about constructive. Built something to work on. And the problem is a lot of these places aren't doing it. So therefore, what you've got is, oh, I really like this. And, and then people, oh, I love that. Or people are po-faced and blank because they don't know what to say because, to be honest, it wasn't that good. But because they're not allowed to try and be, okay, I enjoyed this, but I think you need to work on this. Um, you're not allowed to do that. So therefore, nobody is learning and developing apart from the consultants that are paying a huge amount of money because that's their job. They want these people to come to them to make money instead of giving them a little bit of development on the side. And it's not even on the side because to join a lot of these clubs, you're looking at two, three, four hundred dollars. So they're still making money. So I'm a bit confused by this because I've been to a lot of these talks and I've been like, this is... You know, these people are lovely, they've got great, but like their pacing or they're doing this or their language or or just generally, it was a terrible, non-coherent talk. But you're not allowed to say, you're not allowed to develop them. So I'm looking, I'm thinking, you know, this is an area that I can help with because I'm Scottish. And quite frankly, as a Scotsman, that means I, I can be delightfully constructive. That's the positive way I'll put it, folks. I can be delightfully constructive. So I'm looking at so many areas of my business now where I'm going to start developing the entrepreneurial side of me into public speaking, public speaking development, into workshops and, and kind of move into the business side again, which is kind of scary because I've been out of that corporate entity for a while. But I think the smaller businesses, you know, when I talk to people who understand me, they know what I can offer and they're actually like, this is perfect. You can do A, B, C, D so easily. So there's so many kind of things that I'm going to change into and start to grow into. But I was at this Entrepreneur Centre one and uh, this chap had this uh, presentation he'd set up. Now, I was with a fellow, uh, Dave had come along, I know him, and we sat beside each other. And So the first thing that became very apparent is this was not what was advertised. What he was selling, it was on that theme, but it wasn't what it was described as. Secondly, he was playing what I call the smartest man in the room syndrome. So, one or two people there knew who he was and knew what he was talking about. I had no idea because it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. Dave had a little bit of an inkling, but still, it wasn't what he thought it was going to be. But the problem is the guy, I mean, I took notes. Gosh, I don't even have my notes here. Um, quite often when this sort of thing happens, what I do is I end up just assessing and taking notes on the speaker rather than the subject. So I was writing notes and I all I remember is like no cohesion. Uh, this doesn't make sense. What am I actually listening to? I, and, and I remember writing a comment, am I stupid or is this really not making any sense? Because there was, there was nothing to grasp. He was using language which I didn't understand, uh, language which was uh, specific to an industry and only a few people were grasping it. He was using so many facts and figures and anecdotes personal to himself that it was really hard to invest in the talk. And it was just the weirdest thing to see because... It really was absolutely poor. I don't want to say bad rubbish or anything like that. It was just poor. From a guy who has been doing this, and the worst bit was they were filming him and recording him. You know, and this happens quite often in the ATB. People come and film them because this is their presentation. But I'm sitting there going, if you think this... Now, maybe in his industry it'll work. I don't know. You know, maybe to the people of his mindset it will work. But I'm a great believer when you do a presentation... Forget the facts and the figures. Don't go heavily in them. Use them, but use their strengths. Use language, which is human. You know, communication, connection, being human. That's what it's all about. So when you're doing a presentation, basically, you know, it doesn't matter if these people are smarter than you or not smarter than you. Bring it down to a human level. Tell the story behind it. Don't focus on the facts and the figures because that can just ruin it. Make sure that your presentation is actually at a level that one and all can understand that you could take into a school or into a corporate board boardroom because the reality is there's nothing worse than looking at a pretentious get. Trying to be smart and superior. And nine out of ten times it probably loses them the contract. You know, the guys that I've worked with, you teach them to be human and they usually get the contract because people are more 
in tune with them. You know, people are actually focused on what they're saying, engaged by them. They're using humour. They're using stories. They're using the facts. They're using the figures. But they're doing it in a way that it's just not dull and dry and boring. And God, I've been in so many dull and dry and boring presentations where you're just like, what am I watching? Why Why am I here? What? What, what is your... What is, you're trying to get across your message because all you're doing is hitting me with graphs and paperwork and blah, blah, blah. You know, we've all been there, haven't we? You know uh, those uh, talks you go to and they've got their um, slide projector? That's uh, a very old word I've just used there, isn't it? They've got their laptop and they're putting up on the projector and they're clicking through and all you're looking at is graphs and pie charts and diagrams and all they're doing is reading it off their laptop. They're not actually engaging you eye to eye, heart to heart, mind to mind. They're not focusing in on you. And I know I'm rambling and not being as cohesive as I could be. But the problem I find quite often is these people, they are incredibly intelligent. They're incredibly smart. And they forget that not the right. I mean, I'm not going to lie. I am not a smart guy. I'm not educated. I'm not... You know, I haven't got university degrees of that. I've I've worked my ass off to get high in levels within banking and finance and insurance. You know, I've really worked hard to do what I do. Uh, you know, regional man, you know, I've done it through graft and experience. So I don't have the academia, but what I do have is the the learning of life and the ability to adapt it. And I go into these, you know, my language is pretty good. The storytelling's helped develop my, you know, skill set, my presentation and all that. But I go into a lot of them and sometimes I'm just sitting there going, I have, I have no idea what you're saying. You're, you're being, like this language is beyond me. And I find that if you develop a presentation or a talk like that, then you're going to lose half your audience, if not more. Because not everybody is as educated as you think they are. People have a different learning mode. They have a different way of adapting. And not everybody's going to be, you know, educated to the level of engineering or accountants or blah, blah, blah. So create a presentation, a work of art, a craft, a, a, a story around what you're doing that resonates with your audience and everyone that everybody can understand. And this is one of the big failings these days. So I'm looking at all this in my business and kind of going, this is how I need to approach myself. I've been guilty of it as well, losing that aspect of who I am, you know, getting a bit too pompous. Oh, I'm a storyteller. I do this. In fact, you know what I am? I'm just a guy that goes out and entertains and tells stories and hopefully brings joy to people. Now, in the business side, I want to do exactly the same model. Yes, it will be for a different clientele, but my whole thing is to bring joy and pleasure, learning and understanding, and hopefully the idea is they walk away with it with a better grasp of what they're trying to do and a different approach to what they're trying to do. And the public speaking side to me is so exciting because, you know, I've I've just seen so many people being developed and I don't personally think they're being developed right because they're not getting anything to work from. If I was to tell you, oh, everything you do is perfect, everything you do is great, yep, you're amazing, oh, fantastic, yep, yeah, I love that, love that, love that, love that, what are you going to take from it? You're going to take that you're amazing and you're going to become stagnant. You're not going to develop. You're not going to grow. You're not going to grasp it by the horns. There'll be no hustle in your heart because you think that you have achieved greatness, even if you're just mediocre or poor. But because you're not getting the right development, because nobody's actually got the guts to stand up in this day and age and say, I'm sorry, that was really weak. You can do better. I've seen you do better. Let's work on this. Nobody's got it. You know, it's this, it's, um, I believe that you, like, there's something called a participation award these days, uh, is the big running joke. You know, I've got teacher friends that say, you know, quite often kids now get it just for turning up. You know, there's no, there's no negativity even in some of these classrooms now. And I grew up in a school system where you got A, B, C, D, E, F, you know, F is fail. Apparently that doesn't exist as much. The scoring systems don't exist as much. And I'm kind of like, this is bad because we're creating a generation that doesn't know how to fail. Failure is an amazing thing. Losing is an amazing thing. How many of my listeners out there have failed and lost? How many of them have failed today? Just being a human at something. I have. 
Jeez, I've failed today. I know I have. You know, I've failed because I'm behind in my podcast. I've failed because I got ill. I've failed because I disciplined my dog the wrong way. And, you know, it's those silly wee things, just simple wee things. We all fail. But what do you do when you fail? You learn from it. You develop from it. And if you don't, well, that's your problem, to be honest. That's just you being, I don't know, Trump or something. I don't know. Just, you know what I mean? But the, the fact is, without failure, without realising that we can achieve more, we're all going to stagnate. And this seems to be happening in this world. A lot of things are not about failure. Now, I'm not saying failure. I, I don't like the word failure as much. But without the idea of failure, without the idea of being able to improve, we're not going to progress. And a lot of these groups, a lot of things out there have just... I don't know, folks. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm just rambling, but I've seen so many times the idea of failure and negativity is not allowed. Now, we don't want to be a negative nation. We don't want to be down on people. But that's why you put that constructive criticism, you know, the, the poo-poo sandwich to clean up my language. There you go, I failed because I swore in my podcast a couple of times today. But the idea is, you know, we need to... We really need to know when we're not doing it right. We need to know how to improve it. We need to have constructive criticism. I don't want ever a participation award. Hey, Callum, you participated. Well done, you're amazing. No, I'd rather someone come out and say, hey, Callum, you know what? That was the worst thing I've ever heard. Because then I can go back and cry and beat myself up and drink a bottle of whiskey and mourn what an ass I was, but then come back stronger. Come back and go okay, I screwed up, I didn't do something, did I not prepare enough, did I write the wrong thing, did I not research the uh, audience or the theme enough, what did I do wrong, let's improve, maybe go find someone to work with and say, let's see how we can develop this further. But the problem is, if you come to me and I have just literally failed on stage and say, oh, that was amazing, oh, you were fantastic, you were amazing, you were great, oh, I'm not going to know any better. Although I'm Pretty much in myself, I always doubt what I do. You know, I come off stage, say that was terrible, that was awful. Oh my God, what did I just do? That's in my mentality. That's Scottish. Uh, I'm not Catholic, but it's kind of like the Scottish Catholic guilt thing straight away. Um, but the reality is, it's like I come from a doom and gloom country at times. We have failed at everything. Come on, guys. Look at Scottish history. Look at Scottish sports. Look at, right, okay, let's do it. Football. Scottish national team, come on. Yeah, there we go. I heard someone shout out, oh my God. Yeah, <clears throat> the Scottish national football team, disaster. Sports, disaster. Warfare, disaster. Our politics are pretty much disasters. We can't even get independence. Like, literally, I come from a gloomy, lovely little country. I adore it, don't get me wrong. And it's created a very miserable race of people, but a very blunt race. One of my friends was uh, talking to me again, and he says, you know, I like you, Callum, because you don't, you don't pander. I know you call it being Scottish, but, you know, I don't suffer fools lightly. I don't um, kind of tolerate nonsense. I tell it how it is, and a lot of people don't like it. But the reality is, it's like, that's the country I come from. We come from a country where we really accept our failings and our, our wins. You know, we understand it and we learn from it. Not the football team. They don't ever learn from it. Um, and, you know, just, I would take up curling. Um, but yeah, the reality is, it's like, without failure, we're nothing. We cannot grow. And the problem is, the society we're now in is stopping people from learning that very basic lesson and I think in the last 10 years it's it's definitely I've seen it as changing I may be wrong you know as I say call me out on this guys but I do get the feeling I'm not talking about political correctness or that I just get the feeling that we're trying to we're becoming too nice we are becoming PC in certain ways and the fact is without people being told that in a good way I'm not talking about just ripping you know them a new ass I'm talking about it in a positive way but just like that wasn't good, you need to improve on that, but that's not happening, so life is going a crazy way, guys, and I don't know how things are going to look, because it looks like we're, we're all facing mediocrity, if not worse, if people don't start reversing this trend, and that's what I'm doing, I'm reversing this trend, you know what, if anyone wants to be taught some public speaking skills, storytelling, stuff like that, 
I'm more than happy to help develop you. Um, I'm not going to lie, there'll be a fee involved. I'm in business here, folks. But the reality is, don't expect to be mollycoddled. Don't expect, if you do a poor job, for me to sit there and go, oh, that was lovely, yes, the, uh, positive, positive, oh, oh, darlings, you did divine. That that was just ruddy fantastic. Uh, don't expect any of that from me. I'm Scottish. I will sit there with a whiskey and a flat cap on just to stereotype and um, basically uh, go at you. But I'm not going to, like, decimate you, but I'm not going to hold back. I am the type of guy that if I want, if I'm going to develop or mentor or help progress people and train people, I want to make sure that my name, right? Because it's also about me, folks. I want to make sure that you go out there and do the best, most amazing job ever. Love what you do and are passionate about it. But I also want to protect my name. Who who trained you? Oh, a guy called Calm Lycan. All right, wow. You must be pretty decent if, you know, because you're amazing. I want that feedback. I don't want, oh God, who trained you? Calm Lycan. Oh, we're never using him because you're rubbish. You know, that's what I mean. It's like, I'm really confused by all these public speaking mentors and coaches that are basically doing this positive thing. Maybe they don't do that in the one-to-ones, but even in these group talks that I'm going to, they're doing this positive, no negative thing. And I'm just like, I'm sorry, but I'm not inspired to come and get mentoring or any development off you because I don't know if you're going to be honest with me. I don't know if you're actually going to tell me if I'm any good because you're just looking for a paycheck. You know, I think, um, to be honest, if I um, if anyone does take me up, this is a crazy one, but if anyone takes me up on this, okay, we'll talk terms, but I think I would vet people. I don't think I would just take people on for money. You know, oh, you come to me with money uh, and I'll instantly take you on. No, I think I want to make sure that these people are, are, are invested in it. You know, they might not be the best, but we can work on that. But I want to make sure people are invested in it because the reality is if uh, you don't have the passion for it, you're already on a losing streak. You know, um, Gary V talks about all that stuff. You know, passion is what makes you. Passion is uh, what fuels you. And it, do what you're passionate about. And I bet there's so many people out there not doing what they're passionate about. Six uh, odd years ago, I discovered storytelling and became so passionate about it. This is all I do. I don't work in chapters. I don't work in a bar. I don't work other than what I do, traveling, storytelling, developing businesses, doing podcasts. Oh yeah, folks, uh, remember that comment I made about my face for radio? Oh, I've decided I'm going to start doing vlogs as well. Um, I don't know if this one's going to be good. This is not a good face, especially since I removed my upper lip, uh, my beard. I, I, I look like a weird kind of upside down baby. Um, it's it's kind of weird. I don't know. I don't trust it. Anyway, Callum Lycan, storytelling and narrative consultancy. Probably I'll have to change that to narrative. I'm thinking strategist. Somebody let me know. Um, but I'm, I'm moving into this public speaking field. I'm moving into development. I want to train people and do big workshops. And I'm not talking about your $5 workshop. I'm talking about 500 bucks, 10 to 15 people. Come, let's develop you for a whole day. Boom. High end. None of this messing about. I'm wanting you to walk out there and know how to hold fort, how to walk in front of a thousand people and say, this is me. This is what you're getting. And you're going to love every minute of it because I know I'm going to give you all my heart and soul because I am passionate about this. And that's how I want to make sure people are going out into the world. And you know what? It will be constructive. It will be driven. It will not be a cakewalk where you think you're the greatest thing on earth. And if you come in thinking that and I find a flaw, I'll tell you. If you come in thinking that and there are no flaws, I'll be honest and say, you're good. Why are you in this workshop, Bolt? You know? <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know about that. That might not be the best business practice. Um, Anyone who's in business, just remind me if that's a good business practice, kicking people out your workshop just because they don't need it. Um. But anyway, yeah, Calm Lycan Storytelling and Narrative Consultancy, it's definitely a, a progression, as I say. We're looking at doing a whole wealth of things with that. So that is basically going to be involving the storytelling still, of course, but it's going to have uh, the CEO training, helping businesses develop their corporate story, um, going in and training staff, helping people develop their own story, you know, 
public speaking, presentation skills. So it's all there. It's a huge wealth of things. And I'm so looking forward to getting my teeth into it and hopefully picking up some lovely clients. And I don't care. I'm not looking for your big oil and gas. Do you know, actually, one of the areas that I'm really keen is the breweries. There's a huge craft brewery industry in uh, Calgary alone. And a lot of them do walking t- uh, like tours of their events. And some of the tours are a wee bit dry. Now, obviously, my background is storytelling and walking tours. So I can help them develop that. That's just, oh, honestly, folks, there's so many cool things. So, yes, times are a changing. And to be honest, I'm speaking about change, my change. And also, I think, changing in maybe some of your attitudes, guys, because... I think you should, one of the things I've been doing is reading a lot of books, you know, Gary Vee and a lot of these development. Um, I picked up, uh, God, How to Make Friends and Influence People, The Art of Public Speaking by, uh, oh, Carnegie, is it? Jeez, I can't remember the guy's name now. And um, it's it's a really kind of older book and it's a wonderful book. And I would highly recommend it for anyone because it is just such an interesting read. And it just gets your mindset refocused. You know, between him and the passion that guys like Gary Varnachuk have about passion and energy and drive and and working hard, but actually not wasting your time. Because, you know, it's true what he says. You know, we sit and watch YouTube and we sit in there, you know, we could sit there for four hours. That's four hours of your life. You know, when you're 80 years old, you sit and watch YouTube, guys. Not when you're 20, 30, 40, 50, when you've got time to make stuff happen in this world. Wait until your legs don't work and your elbows are screwed and your head's befuddled and you're drooling in your hundreds before you sit down and just sit and watch Netflix. Get out there and make it happen. That's that's how I'm doing it now. As I say, I'm going to do vlogs and all that. I'm challenging myself in an area that terrifies me, showing this face. I'm sorry, it'll terrify you as well. But I, I just think it's time to do it. Uh, so have a look uh, on my uh, YouTube channel. I had to redo it, so it's a bit of a mess. i still got to upload loads of old stuff. But there's going to be some videos coming out, vlogs, fun, some education stuff, talking about stuff, just, you know, interviews. It's going to all be there. I'm going to start recording the podcast as well and putting it out there. But you know what? Change your mindset. Start today. Don't put it on a planner for next Sunday. Get motivated. Realise that there's more to this world. If you're passionate about something, look at how you can make that happen. Don't make money for someone else. Don't do it for the man. As they say, God, did I just use that term? That's amazing. I used the term the man. Oh, I'm so not happy with myself right now. Um, But, you know, that was my mindset. I used to work for lots of companies and then I realised, why am I? You know, I used to get a good pay. I'd be walking away £500 a week, you know? when I was working for people and then I did my own business, I was walking away with 350 minimum a day. A day. Not a week, a day. 350. In two days, I was making what I was making in a week and more quite often. So think about that seven days a week when I was doing my walking tours and storytelling. Find your passion and make it happen. Be driven. Go for it. And you know what? If if you're struggling, drop me an email. Callum Lycan, spoken word at gmail.com. Speak to me. Ask me. I'm no Gary Varnachuk, I'm no Dale Carnegie, I'm no uh, Robbins, Tony Robbins and all that. But you know what? I'm a human being and I'll do my best to give you some advice. And if you want any development stuff, we can sit and talk about that as well because I'm into developing humans. I think that's the best way. Forget narrative consultant. I'm a human developer. I want to get you out there to talk to people, to socialise, to become something, to grow and expand your world, which in results will grow and expand your finances and your businesses and your life. So get in touch with me, guys. This is what I do. This is this is how much I love it. And this is me making that change as well. I am making these changes live. Not live because this is recorded, but you know what I mean. As I speak it live, I'm making these changes that I know how I need to focus my mindset. So come on, join me. Get out there with me. Make it happen. And get in touch if you want any advice or to chat about anything, because I would be delighted to pass on any of my knowledge, whether it's worthwhile or not. Okay? But guys, let's do it. And let's move on and do a little book review. And it seems completely only right to give you my book review for this one as a Gan- Gary. Now, I've probably been mispronouncing this guy's name, Vaynerchuk. 
Vaynerchuk, Gary V, as he goes by in a lot of his uh, social media. But the book that I want to recommend, I actually was given this. I was doing a social media course online with a guy called, oh, is it Chris Cromwell? Wonderful guy, full of energy. My God, that guy's manically energetic. Wonderful, but he's driven. He's been an entrepreneur for years. So I do a lot of his online courses. I find his personality quite delightful. And, you know, you always learn something. He's a really good guy. So one of the courses I did, he said, I'm going to give you all a gift. There was only a small group. And he basically said, send me your email and your address. I'll send you a gift. And um, I had looked a lot at the Gary Vaynerchuk. <laughs> Gary, if you listen to this podcast at any point, I'm really sorry. Um, you know what? I come from Europe. Your, your family from your backstory is from Europe as well. I should know better how to pronounce your name, even though we're from different areas of Europe. But the reality is I'm rubbish at pronouncing names. But um, Chris uh, sent me this book, Gary Vaynerchuk. Why now is the time to crush it? cash in on your passion. The book is basically crush it. Um, I love it. I've read it now a couple of times and I just, oh God, it's an infectious book. I don't want to be one of those guys, you know, oh, I'm going to help you make a million pounds in a, or a million dollars in a day. Oh yeah, I can do this. Wah, 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 you know, and you're trying to buy into something. Because at the end of the day, when you go to these conferences, I love them, but it, it, there's always that sales pitch that just makes me pee myself because it's so funny. Because you know it's coming and they're trying to, and then you can see them kind of going, oh, no, no one's buying in. But there's always some guy that spends about 20 grand anyway. It's like amazing. But, you know, this book I really love because uh, it's basically him imparting his knowledge, but he's basically telling you his story more. And this is why I appreciate it. It's all about him explaining passion, how he says making things out of your passion, make it work, do it. So you get his kind of whole story and he goes into some of the uses of social media and um, all those kind of tools that he's used. And it really is just a delightful and powerful little read. Um, I am thoroughly enjoying it. I'm halfway through it again and I just love it because it is just filled with little gems, some great information, but it's mainly the passion I like. It's mainly the drive of this man. I mean, he really is a bit of a monster. Um, he says himself, he doesn't expect anyone to be like him. But the fact is, if you can put in an ink, a, t a bit of the energy that he puts in, you're going to make some success. A lot of us don't need millions and millions of dollars. You know, I've always said I'd be quite happy with a, a set amount that gives me a nice, comfortable, happy life that I can support my family, have a nice house, have a car, basically travel when I want to, do what I want to do, but still build on my passion. I'm not interested in the big, big money. I'm happy to have that money, which means if I want to buy something, we can buy it, blah, blah, blah. That's me, okay? But at the same time, if I made the big money, boom, I'm going to be happy. I'm not going to lie. I I'm not, you know, I'm not going to lie. But the reality is this book is wonderful. It's passionate, full of energy, great words of wisdom, and I would highly recommend it. I don't even know how much it was because I got bought it as a gift. Um... $28.50 Canadian, $22.99 US. Um, I would highly recommend it. You know, this is a guy who goes out there and makes it happen. And that's one thing about Gary V that I really respect. He doesn't sit a rest in his laurels. If you follow him on social media, you'll see he's posting videos near enough every day. He's posting blogs and vlogs. And I remember tuning into some crazy moment. He was selling wine online and phoning up the people. And it was just, you know what? It was... It was so nothing, but it was so pleasurable. And by that same nothing, it was just the energy and the passion. You know, there was it was random as hell, but the passion and the energy and the fun that everyone in that room was having made it so infectious to watch. So Gary Vee is a guy that I would highly recommend to anyone, but his book, Crush It, is definitely one to pick up because it's just a bloody enjoyable read, folks. You can pick it off Amazon, probably in chapters, and most local bookshops. He actually has quite a few books out, um, and I like reading his stuff, mainly because his writing style is very casual and formal and fun. And I think he admits that he dictates it because he's not very good at writing stuff, or he's bored at writing. I can't remember which one it was. He's either it bores him, or he's just not very good at writing, so he basically dictates it and someone else does it. So you're kind of getting his words dictated, which I like, because he's telling you his story, and it's pretty much coming from his mouth. And immediately after our book recommendation, we move into our ATB Alberta Podcast Network recommendation. So the podcast I want to recommend through the Alberta Podcast Network is 
cross-pollination kind of fly, flies with what we've been talking about. Do you, do you, oh gosh, pollination flies. That's, I didn't mean that. Cross-pollination. Uh, it's a podcast about creativity and innovation. NB interviews those who combine fields, knowledge and talents to create something new. So cross pollination uh basically it's a podcast about creativity and innovation uh it's an interview based podcast it's all about knowledge talents and creating something new so it's a very entrepreneurial kind of feel to it and i think it fits in perfectly with what we've been talking about so alberta podcast network recommendation is cross pollination and that brings us to the end of another episode of the Bothy storytelling podcast me rambling and ranting away i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope that you're inspired to get out there and make it happen, guys. Please don't just listen and go, yeah, whatever, you know. Fact is, I've travelled and moved four and a half thousand miles. I'm building a new business and unit here. I'm, I'm basically, in the last two years, I'm trying to create something new and I'm having to evolve and grow and adapt to a country that's so vast that I can't do road trips all the time. Scotland I can, here I can't. So I am having to learn new ways and develop and build and look at voiceover and CDs and development and spoken word things. I'm basically trying to create a whole new business, become an entrepreneur when I didn't think that was me. So anybody can do it. If I can do it at the age of 41, you guys can get out there and make it happen because I'm sure some of you are a lot younger than me. So please get out there make it happen as Gary V would say crush it use the hustle and make it happen and if you did enjoy the episode remember to register and find us on Facebook at uh, the Callum Lycan Studio or Callum Lycan Storytelling which is the other Facebook page we're on Instagram we're on Facebook we're on Twitter <laughs> I know I keep saying Twitter I like it it's cute um, even though I have a word that says uh twitter might actually be uh on its way out a bit because it's kind of not getting used but you know what focus keep using it there's so many great social media networks out there to work with but do search for us find us join us and remember callum lichen spoken word at gmail.com reach out to me if you want some advice any help if you want to become a pupil i can become your yoda i i can become a backpack while you run yeah, no, that will probably hurt you a lot. And that sounds a bit sick. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. That's, that's wrong. Ignore that last statement, please, people. But do find me. Do reach out. If you enjoy the show, reach out. If you want to find out more about me or any help from me or any advice, reach out. Callum Lycan, spoken word at gmail.com. But this has been an episode of the Bothy Storytelling Podcast. And I look forward to seeing, hearing and being with you all on the next episode. 